name is John Bergman, um, and I am a theater guy and a drama therapist and, uh, and a teacher and somebody who's worked in prisons for a lot of years and done a lot of theater all over the world with, with non-traditional and non-professional actors and actresses. There was a theater just outside of Santa Fe, very close to the penitentiary in actual fact, and it was called the Theater of All Possibilities. And that's the answer. Everything is possible. There's a, an old Pharaoh Saunders uh, song from, from the 60s, 70s, you know, with the power of soul, everything is possible. You know, I don't know how much soul I've got, but by God, everything is possible. Todd's an, Todd's an extraordinary man who I, who I have a great amount of admiration for. He is an original. He is extraordinary. What he's done here is quite inspirational. He cares with an incredible amount of caring. It's a real deep and strong care. When you, when you are like that and you ask me to do something and I know you, I'll be there. Um, in our world, in the world of the prisons and this type of theater, um, once you're connected, you're connected. You know, that's the way that it is. People make theater all the time. They never stop. Uh, you, you talk to, you talk to uh, men and women that are doing anything from the most menial jobs to the most grand of jobs and let them go talk about themselves. Or let somebody tell you about an accident they just saw. Um, watch what happens when there's an accident in the street and everybody stands around because they're watching the live theater of it and everybody's going, look, what's he doing and what's she doing and why are they coming? You know, everybody does theater constantly. We watch television. It's filled with theater. What does anybody think that that is? We go to the movies. It's just simply theater in action. This country is addicted to theater. It can't get away from it. It does games and video games that are nothing but more theater and Dungeons and Dragons which is more theater and fantasy which is more theater it doesn't stop and then it has Olympic Games which is even more theater people running and competing and all the the stuff of the camera zooming down and wanting to know is he on drugs is he not on drugs is this guy this one is sweating and that one is not sweating and tiny little things that the announcers will say about you know when you take steroids you can always tell something or other with a face and everybody's there it's all theater it's not as if there's the thing that is called theater is often deadly and dull, just exactly as Peter Brooks said. We're talking about, you know, the stuff that is the right stuff to go and see. So, did you see the latest play by Jubby Jubby and the Hoop? No, I didn't. I, in actual fact, I missed it. Well, did you see the most recent piece by Kimby Kimby and Tap Tap? No, I don't know why I didn't see that. But guess what? I saw this shit that got done at this local place. Amazing. Those kids were so into it. It really got me. And my next door neighbors, they're having a huge big fight. You want some drama? Come down my way. You know. So theater is something that occurs constantly. Life and drama. The scene, the scene, and the scene. They're, they're not indistinguishable from each other. The world has been terrified of theater, and yet if you look at the history of theater, just if you stay in the, in the European world, look at what, what Aristotle said. He said, oh my God, you know what this stuff does? Have you ever vomited so much, and when you finish vomiting, you go, oh, thank God, no more vomit. He said, that's what happens when you go to see a play, and you see some guy, and he was like great and glorious, and then he fucking falls. You know, the, in, the, the impact on you is so strong, it's catharsis. Catharsis is a medical term. That's what it applies to. The Romans turned around and said, look, if somebody's very depressed, they need to go see a... And they recognized thousands of years ago that theater is one of those natural things that we send people for in order to go and feel, to go and feel better, to go and feel worse. That. It's not a weird thing, it's not a new thing, it's not an old thing, it's an always thing. The ontology of theatre. Just ontologically looking at theatre and looking at rituals, they're different, they share something or other. Theatre exists in its own right with its own stuff, it's very powerful. 
This is not a question. The fact that the American political system doesn't recognize its value, but the American political system at the moment, as far as I can see, only recognizes oil companies. You know, and oil companies don't recognize theater. It's not part of making money. There's no money to be made in theater because the story is constantly being told. So in terms of, you know, if we say, is theater recognized in terms of the amount of money it gets? Who gives a heck? It's recognized by people continuously and constantly, and it always has been. Oh, the theater is dying, but it isn't. You've got a community theater here. Wherever we go around America, there's a community theater. Some schmucks will get together and say, let's go do Death of a Salesman for the 999,000th time because somebody's lit up by that play and people will go to it. Not even sure why they're going and they get all dressed up and they put their little suits and shirts and ties on and they wear rosy little, you know, et cetera. And they go because they know, somewhere or other they know. Theater's not dead. And has never died. 